Today is the hardcore episode where I build tons of farms before attempting the largest project ever inside this world. My end goal is to transform the entire end dimension. Get it? Ha! <laughs> end goal but first i need a bunch of blocks to build with so i got a little sidetracked today and built an entire nether hub as well as every single one of the nether farms apparently this is how i get ready for a massive project by doing a completely different project but partially related massive project and spending hundreds of hours working on it so leave a like and subscribe yeah that's the intro sorted the first farm i want to build today is a slime farm which thankfully is very easy now in minecraft 1.19 i just need a lot of brown mushrooms well i should say i need a little over nine stacks of brown mushrooms hopefully we can find some here on the nether roof with the brown mushrooms sorted next up i need 11 stacks of building blocks and tough should do two stacks of tinted glass and so close but a quick trip to the geodes Blah! nailed it and we can craft some more perfect next up i need 25 buckets of powdered snow thankfully we can get right here there we go and this should do it for everything we need to build the farm now just to get to the swamp to actually make it I don't have the blocks to build another golem, so I'm just going to start adding in the mushrooms where I can. Wow, that was the perfect number of brown mushrooms. Oh, that's lucky. The final step is to create an AFK platform in the sky. For this, I want to take a play out of my friend Mythical Sausage's book and create a hot air balloon to AFK inside of safely, which is looking pretty good. Now I can sit here and see if we actually get any slime. Let's hope it works. One item I really, really want to use for the end project is frog lights. I should have some frogs down here in the birch forest, which we can breed using the new slime balls I just got. I've been waiting the entire day. They've done nothing. Oh, uh, yes, there we go. Finally. And now I wait 10 minutes. Oh, we got tadpoles. Ah, there they are. Right. Now I just need a bunch of these and to grow them all in the different biomes. My goal is to get eight frogs of each color. First, the cold frogs we can get up here on the mountain after they grow. Oh, we got our first frog. Oh, I love them. The green ones are so cute. And here we have eight of our green frogs, one of the three down. The orangey brown frogs are now ready to go as well. Oh, look at them. They're so happy. Right. One more set to go. Nope. Back through the portal back through the portal i want to do it later but so we don't lose any more frogs we'll break this portal the new portal should be going right here in you go boys in you go frogs has all been transferred to the roof and now for the final type of frog 30 minutes later and we've done it eight of each type of frog for a future nether hub i want to use this lava lake and open a way through the ceiling all the way up there so i can have an easier way to get onto the roof than this little hole which coordinates was lines up to these torches here perfectly centered on the gas farm now if i did my math correctly and we go directly this way we hit basalt delta meaning we can build the frog light farm and magma cube farms out here running back to the base i craft up everything i needed to start building this farm by shulkercraft uses pretty basic mechanics but it's just a lot of blocks and everything fits into these two boxes right into assembling the farm to collect frog lights the collection system is created for me to store the byproduct of frogs eating magma cubes and somehow pooping out a different colored cube oh everybody get in line please children an orderly fashion of the frog apocalypse look at them slowly but froggily into the pit of snack time i would like all these leads back please thank you And up we go. Looks like the farm is working from up here. We can get rid of the scaffolding and we should see a few frog lights coming in. How did you get down here? And there we have it, our first frog lights. Oh, that's amazing. Time to give this a little bit of while to work and we'll have plenty. With the frog light farm finished up, I AFK'd for a while to gather up a good supply. But that's enough techie stuff for a bit. It's time to build pretty things. Like breaking a giant hole inside of the bedrock ceiling. 
Am I going a little too big on this one? I don't know. We'll find out. It's a circle. All right, time to get some stuff together. To do this, I'm going to need hundreds of TNT blocks, lots of pistons, and finally levers and trap doors. To make sure this is an absolute pain, I put on blast protection boots, blast protection pants, and we're going to throw on the chest piece. Assembling the bedrock breaking machine, grabbing the piston, we flip the lever, we go down, and we spam click right here. Uh, I don't think that worked. It worked. Oh, it worked. Now I just got to do it this entire circle. Okay, let's keep going. New more dangerous design. Let's see if this one wants to work for us. Please. Yes. Two blocks down. First few lines are in and I am wasting so much food. So I think I just set up a regen beacon. About 40% of the way around the circle. And wow, my armor is toasted. All right, there we go, all fixed up. The first circle in the bedrock ceiling is now dug out and we've got a few access points all the way down, which means we're done, right? I don't have to spend three more hours breaking all this. Yeah, okay, I, I, get, I guess we just keep going. Four hours later and we got four blocks left on the top layer. I found it's easier if you surround the thing completely with obsidian and don't fall in the hole. And there we go, the entire top layer is done. Repairing all the armor one more time. Crafting up some more rockets because I am very out. And more TNT. Instead of clearing layer by layer, I started shifting to clearing all the way through in order to have some hope of seeing the bottom and being able to break into the netherrack. We're a little over halfway done now, about seven hours into this project. Resources are starting to run thin, but at least the end is in sight. And there goes the last one just to clean up all this mess. With the circle cleared out, I wanna use the remaining TNT that I have to blast a hole all the way down to the lava lake below. And finally, this should give us a very easy way to fly in and out of the nether. There it goes. Now we can be safe on top of the nether and anytime we need to get anything, we can fly on down. With the big circle through the bedrock roof, next up, we need to build something here. Because right now it looks cool, but it doesn't look that great. First up to raid all of the pearlescent frog lights, this will hopefully be enough. I've been stocking up resources in my base for far too long. So it feels nice to finally be able to empty some of these shulker boxes. But no matter how many blocks I have, there's always something else I still need. First, amethyst clusters. Then a load of packed ice, which I can craft into blue ice. Lastly, I need light blue dye to make light blue glass. So a quick flower farm in the swamp should do the trick. Some of this blocks don't work, but there we go. Crafting up the light blue glass and we'll be all ready. I'm really liking this, but outside of it, things are a little bland right now. So I've got something I wanna try. We bring the frog lights all the way down and create a floor here out of the light blue concrete powder. Now again, on the outside, I wanna bring in even more frog lights. And from here, we can create a foggy glass effect with our blue glass. The foggy glass effect is now in and we got some more substance going around here. Next, I've got these little pockets on the side and we need to mob proof everything. So prismarine first and amethyst clusters on top. This is looking really good now but there's a few things we can still do like making this into something functional by having some offshoots going every direction so we can create some ice boat roads bordering on all of the endstone bricks that we've been using to help brighten up the nether and this right here is exactly why it all needs to be mob proof but first i'm obsessed with frog lights and if you got a problem with that hop on out of here get it it's a frog pun Please don't leave. From here, we can run a blue ice track all the way down the middle, cover all of the frog lights with even more glass and a nice crystal border. To keep the road safe, we need slabs along the edge and walls to keep the boat going straight because that's really difficult. And with that, I got to repeating the same pattern over to the other three sides of our nether hub thingy of sorts. To add some green into the nether, I wanna add a bunch of mossy carpets around the base. 
And there we go, the entire green strip, which I'm actually really enjoying. But I brought some things I might be able to use as a border. Maybe something like this. Now it feels a little bit more like a garden. The Pokeball is looking really good, but it's a little flat. And before I extend the ice boat roads all the way out to their farms, a very, very long distance, magic floating crystals should be able to help. Just a bunch of colors. Bunch of colors of glass here are ready to go. But first, let's grab some sandstone, where we can build some big pillars stretching high into the sky. The archways are now all in place and time to put some crystals between them. And now the rest of the crystals are in as well. Flying down from the nether and up to the roof. That looks really cool. Remember, today we started with this. And now we're here. But before finishing off the ice boat roads, I need farms built up to connect them to. Down the yellow crystal road, I want to create a gold farm in the nether waste biome. Using the magma cube farm, I'm able to craft up all of the magma blocks I'm going to need. I want to make a portal based gold farm so it's really efficient here. So we need to go to the end and get obsidian. In my grand end entrance, we're like every good YouTuber, I'm definitely recording this in order so we can start taking down one of the obsidian pillars. And off we go. Intense obsidian mining time lapse. So quick. Wow, so much breaking of blocks. So cool. Oh my gosh, this took me 30 minutes. Why am I doing this? With that, the last annoying item I'm going to need is some turtle eggs. Hello, my friends. Now, if we can all just get off the beach and I can pick up the eggs, please. And there we go, 17 turtle diamonds. Items are all together. Finally, it's time to have some gold to work with in this hardcore world. Adding in the turtle eggs and trapdoors to the middle so the pigs can't stop them. It's time to grab some magma blocks and get to work on building all of the platforms. So simply placing in the magma blocks for this farm took a total of seven hours. Shulkercraft, you better be right about this being a mega gold farm. For the final step in the nether, we need to add glass all the way across the top to stop the gas. I should probably get rid of all these piglins before we release them into the overworld. Next, we go to the overworld to build the killing chamber. Uh, I wish we were above ground. I guess I'll just have to move it up myself. Of course, we pop up in the middle of a river, but this should now be fixed. And perfect. Now to hook up the main one. This here should be the spot, so we can throw the nether portal up here. After the portal was up, I assembled the entire collection system in the overworld using a glass box to contain the piglin army. And now, back on the nether roof, I need to light all of these portals and the farm is ready to go. Hopefully the flint and steel last long enough. Ah, oh, we were so close. Oh, oh, that's, that's death down there. All done and the gold farm should be finished as well. As you can see here, this is working very well. But now for the most important thing in any hardcore Minecraft episode, planting a field. Sure, we may have massive amounts of gold now, but I still need more wheat to sustain my packed mud obsession. But now for my other obsession. Have you subscribed? You may watch the videos on my channel all the time, but not realize you're not subscribed. So be sure to double check so you don't miss out on any videos. Now that that's fixed up here, I can live out my happy days. Oh, I have to go back to the nether. I have another farm to build? Oh, okay, fine. Down the Orange Crystal Express, we have a crimson forest, which is porkingly perfect for a hoglin farm. With our spawning platform in place, we can light all of this stuff on fire and get out quick. Oh, that hurts. I cannot wait to watch the terrified hoglins burning in the fire for all of the pain they have caused me. I'm not the bad guy, right? I'm just scaring them and they're tripping. Piglins are friend, not food, so we want to make sure they're not spawning out here. The hoglins are food. Hooking up a storage system here in this hoglin farm by Logical Geek Boy is pretty much done. As always, the last thing, we just need an AFK platform. Things are starting to look pretty crazy up here. There's a lot of technical stuff going on. 
But look at them. Look at them burn. You get what you deserve. I don't like hoglins, okay? But I do like pork chops and leather. With the hoglin farm done, there's only one thing left to do. A piglin bartering system, as I really need those blocks for future builds. And I thought the perfect spot could be another circle around our central point. Now, we already have a bartering farm down here. But as you can see, my evil nemesis, the hoglin, is still here. So I think we take the same design and move it up there. Banning on the current setup, I went around and created an entire new circle on the outer edge to support the bartering station. Oh no, even the baby piggies. Oh no, even the baby piggies. For another element on this build, I'm thinking we can throw in a bunch of gold blocks. Wow, this farm's already full. This way we can show off that it's for piglin trading and taunt the pigs a little bit. Now that I've got a few gold blocks to my name, we can throw some in the walls. Next, I need a load of glass to cover all the frog lights, and I never thought I'd see the day. This is the last of the sand I have from the ocean monument. With all the blue glass I got, I'd like to cover up the frog lights just to darken it a touch. Now for the easy part of this process, I need to build up all of the locations where we're gonna be housing the piglins, which we wanna make sure they're right at home so we can use some gold accents. I've gotta leave the tops off for now though, cause we do need to get piglins in here, but we can at least get this section in here with a frog light and a little bit more endstone. I just need to repeat this 11 more times around the entire circle. With the chest place in, it was easy to follow the design around the hub, making sure to leave space for the piglins to fall into their new forever homes as we're adopting these poor little creatures to force feed them gold. And whoa, this is getting a little too real here. Uh, let's move on. Dude, next up, we need to take a whole load of emeralds here and get ourselves 32 name tags. There we go. Now for the super fun circus of getting the piglins in. First off, we need to create some pathways all the way down here, temporary netherrack right there, and a trapdoor right like that so I can get through and then the piggies stop. We got the crimson forest biome over here. So if we just create a big spawning platform, this should hopefully do it. And if we fly all the way up here, oh, we got a first one and it's got a crossbow. We don't want that. And I gotta take out the babies. Oh, here we go. Now we got it. Oh, we got our first sword. Up here, buddy. Up here. All the way. You can have that. A name and you are in. Number one. 31 to go. Oh, there's so many of them. There's so many pigs. And there we're halfway. There's so many pigs here. I just want the piglins. There is one keeper in all of that. And they're in. 32 piglins in place. Next, I gotta move some glass in. The final piglins are now sealed in. There's definitely better systems for this, but I can currently go around, drop in a bunch of gold in each, click the button, and we're trading. Put nine stacks of gold ingots in half of them because I definitely don't have enough gold to do the other half. But check this out. The center of the nether hub is now completed and we're already getting plenty of goodies. If you have any ideas on how I can clean up the backside here with the chest, let me know. And next up, I need to extend the ice boat roads all the way down to the new farms. That's a very, very long highway. Just gotta go all the way back. With the mud in place, I added in the entire length of endstone bricks, prismarine slabs, amethyst, frog lights, and glass. Holy cow, this is a really, really, really long ice boat highway. I'm really glad I just took a moment to test this before I built the entire blue ice way because watch this. That's not very quick. This doesn't work at all. I modified the design to the Hoglin highway and now we zoom. Meaning I need to raise the blue ice up by a block and I'm thinking we throw in the Ocri frog lights below. Walls are now in place as well. On top of raising this up, next thing I need to get is another five stacks of blue ice. I've got a frozen ocean pretty close to my base so I should be able to get everything here. We've got ourselves 10 stacks and a little bit more of blue ice. Pickaxe is repaired and time to place in all of the blue ice. Here we have the first ice boat highway is now completed. And that is really quick. <laughs> well, straight it out. 
and we're off and we're back the shulker monster is forever growing but i've completed the hogland highway and the gast express the only one left is the gold tunnel thankfully this one is about 100 blocks shorter than the magma one the functional part of the ice boat road is now in time to just make it look pretty starting with the mud going all the way down next up throwing the amethyst on top it's probably smart to spawn proof this right now adding in some frog lights for the light rail then adding our glass right on top and stone has been placed in and the final nether highway is now completed to every single mega farm we could need in the nether over 70 hours spent building in the nether creating a massive nether hub fully equipped with the ability to farm gas magma cubes for frog lights and magma cream decimating the hoglin herds while collecting as many gold nuggies as i can get funneling the nuggies to our new pig friends for so many goodies the nether hub is now complete with that it's time to get to the project i had actually planned to do now be sure to leave a like and subscribe